Hey everyone, I'm going to talk about a subject today that might be a bit daring, maybe bold. It's a subject that I tend to keep pretty private and personal because it's something that I I value quite a bit with all of my heart. Um, and that's religion. See, when I grew up, I grew up as part of a church called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And as a teenager, I became actually atheist for probably about three years or so. But when I was 18, um, I was living with some friends. And across my mind, I just started to have this overwhelming desire to know whether or not there was really a God. Because if there was really a God, it would affect how I would live the remainder of my life. And so I prayed a lot. I researched into various different religions, trying to figure out which of all of these religions might be true. And my mind kept coming back to the same religion that I grew up in. And so reading and praying, I felt in my heart that the church that I belonged to as a kid was true. And I really changed the whole course of my life. And over the past, or over the next couple of years, um, I prepared to go on a mission for my church. So when I was 21, I served a mission for my church for two years in the state of Arizona, English speaking. I fully believed in this church. Um, I got married to someone who belongs to this church. Um, but then after divorce, I was, you know, very active in this church, going to church every week and all of that, serving in, in the church and volunteering and helping people move and all kinds of different things. But somewhere in there, I started to build a relationship with someone online. And it felt like this relationship was real. I spoke with this woman almost daily, almost all day long. It, and if it wasn't just on webcam, there was text, there was audios, we were very much involved with communicating with each other and we were always setting plans to meet, but those plans were always falling through. And after this carried on for some time, you know, I was definitely searching it out in my mind, are these reasons why we can't meet true? And I would pray about it and I felt in my heart that it was true and there were some evidences along the way that really made it all feel very true. But uh, at the end, I basically got to a point where I just really needed to know the truth. And I dug in deep, and I did a lot of investigative work. Um, and because she and I grew to be so close, I got to know who her family members' names were, friends of hers' names were. Um, and I searched them out, found out you know, some contact details for them and found out that actually no she was putting me on the reason why we couldn't meet is actually because she was married all of the other reasons that she had were actually false so even though i prayed about it and there were little evidences along the way that kind of led me feel that it was true and i felt very confident along the way that it was true it actually wasn't and so i was really struck down to the core because I started to think what else in my life have I felt is true actually isn't true and because I believed that my church was true I felt okay I'm going to dig into my church the same way that I dug into this girl that I liked online and I'm going to have an easy win because this church is true it's going to be an easy win I'm going to search through the prophecies I'm going to align them up with reality and just show myself, yep, this is something I can truly believe in and, and dedicate my life to. Because I believed in it, I thought it was going to be an easy win, like I said. But what happened was so unexpected to me. This is I really searched and dug through the prophecies of what is what they call as Latter-day Prophets. I discovered that those prophecies didn't actually line up with reality. There were some that were close and you really had to stretch to make them fit. And I wasn't going to accept a stretch to make it fit type of prophecy. It had to be completely in alignment 
it had to be exactly in line. Um, now, if you'd like, I can provide you with you know some of the prophecies that I discovered and, and studied through, and there's there's a number of them that just don't quite make sense. They don't line up with reality, and for me, I just couldn't accept that. So I walked away from the church that I believed in with all my heart. That was a really hard decision for me because I believed in it. I was practicing it. I was living this church. I served a mission for this church. My whole family is a member of this church. So it was very, very difficult for me to make that decision to just walk away. Especially since I had friends in this church, family, my whole life. You know, this was the base, the core of my life. Every week I was going to this church. And it kind of didn't quite feel right walking away from it just because of my dedication to it. But I had to realize and fully differentiate the difference between what something feels like and what something actually is. That was so, so very important to me. It was very, very important. And so looking at the actual evidence that was before me, I said, you know what, I really can't align with myself to this. And the more that I was away from that church, the less and less true it felt, which I realized, okay, all of that feeling good, it's just kind of as addictive. And, and it's just not actually true. And that's really unfortunate because I really wanted it to be true. I really wanted to prove to myself that this is something that I can really hold on to. But, you know, being left now with, this feeling of, well, then which of all these churches are true? Because the church that I belong to kind of proved that all of the other ones were false. Um, and so I kind of became agnostic, meaning I believe that there is a God, but probably nobody actually has ever spoken with him. No one really know who, knows who he is. All of the religions are probably false. So when I was in the UK traveling last year, um, one of my friends, M.T. Azaslam, he said, Charles, have you ever looked into Islam? And in the back of my mind, I thought to myself, there is no way that that is a true religion. There is no possible way. And he said, Charles, I'm very impressed that you dug into your religion and you found that it wasn't true. But have you ever studied out Islam in that same way? And I said to myself, well, no, not really. And I was thinking, I'm going to dig up so much crap, you won't even like me anymore. So he said, dig it, dig it up. Let's, let's see what you find. And I thought, okay, I'm going to dig in deep. I'm going to prove this thing is false. I'm going to prove it false. Once and for all, not, not based upon what you know, people are saying out there on the Internet, but really look at the core material. Look into the Quran. Look into the prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And look into what is actually said. And line that up with reality. Look at the history. Look at everything, how everything is, and engage from there. And what I found is that there were things written in the Quran that science hasn't actually discovered until just recently. And that really woke my mind up. It was like, wow. And there's just so much in there. There is so much about things that there's no possible way that anyone at that early stage of the earth history, you know, we're talking about 1400 years ago, where they were able to, um, you know, Muhammad, peace be upon him, wrote in the Quran the descriptions of the human embryo on a microscopic level that we didn't even have a powerful enough microscope to even look at until 1877. So his description of it actually matches perfectly there was no human eye or any instrument at that time in human history that would have been able to see what the human embryo looked at that stage. And so I was just thinking, wow, you know, who else would have known this other than the creator, the designer? You know, he passed that information on to an actual prophet. And it just hit me, you know, there's lots of different evidences, many. And so if you Take the time to really dig through it. I invite you to because it is really there. And I know there's a lot of negative things being said out there about Islam. But for me, I came to a point where all of these evidences throughout the Quran actually lined up with reality. And I became a little bit anxious. 
and a little nervous because now that I've found this, I kind of, if I really wanted to follow God, I would have to become a Muslim. Now, just to kind of step back here a little bit, one of the things that I was praying after I left my church was, you know, God, I know that you're there. You're the creator of all things. I really want to follow you. You're the only one I can ask for help with this. You're the only one. No one on earth has, has the ability to show me the way like you do. You have the way. You have the power. You are all merciful and almighty and all able. You have every ability to show me where the truth is. I want to be well with you after I die. That's that's my core thing that I was praying about. Is And, and if I find out the truth, then I'm going to help other people find the truth as well. What's actually very interesting is that as I was learning about the message of Islam, this is actually the core prayer that they pray five times a day, the Surah Fatiha, which is so very interesting that before I even learned about it, this was kind of already what I was praying. It really actually touched me very deeply, but one of the things that really amazed me is I have a friend named Yusuf, and Yusuf, he's kind of a mumbler. He knows a couple of different languages, so he kind of stumbles to find the right word to, to mean what he's trying to say. And we were in Morocco, and we were at a mosque, and I wasn't a Muslim. And I asked him, so, Yusuf, have you been a Muslim your whole life? And he said, yes. And then he said, but I, somewhere along the line, had to gain a confirmation for myself. And that really interested me when he said that, because growing up in the religion that I belong to, we each had to gain a confirmation for ourselves too. But this confirmation came through personal prayer and having a feeling in our hearts and in our minds, kind of confirming for us that something is true. So I asked him, so how did you actually gain this confirmation? And what he ended up doing is kind of going through history and lining up so many different things throughout history, how this, what's in the Quran, lining up evidences, talking about so many things. But one of the things that I truly noticed was that he wasn't mumbling or stuttering or finding words. He didn't have any challenge speaking. He was speaking clearly. And everything just came out smoothly. And I believe that was a miracle. And not only a miracle, but that was one of the things that I was truly praying for in asking God to help me find the religion that truly lines up with reality. Because I don't want to believe in something that's not true. I really want to find something that truly lines up with reality. And so there he is, lining everything up with reality. And I was just like, wow, my prayer is being answered right now, right here in Morocco at this mosque. And this guy, who usually mumbles and stutters, not stutters, but stumbles on his words, he's speaking clearly and finding all of the right vocabulary. So it was a miracle. And so after driving away that day, I just kept thinking into my mind, I'm going to become a Muslim. And so there's a number of people out there who have asked at various different traffic monsoon meetings, or they've asked me in my personal life, Charles, what religion are you? Well, I am a Muslim, but I did grow up a Christian. I grew up a part of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and I found that that church is a very good church. And I don't want to speak bad or ill about it whatsoever because I know they do a lot of good in the world. They have a lot of good teachings, good practices, good morals, all of this. But when it comes to actually being a true church, that truth has only been revealed through actual prophets. And I know that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is an actual, true prophet. And so I invite all of you, whoever's watching this video, to take time, if you're not a Muslim yet, open up the Quran and actually read it. 
Now, one of the things that you might not notice, because it's written in English, probably if you're reading it in English, is that the actual Arabic is so poetic. And the prayer that you pray five times a day, you can feel the, the rhyming and the rhythm to it. It's amazing. It's amazing. And it just, I don't know. I guess what I'm just trying to say is that for me, I have found that there is something that truly lines up with reality, actual evidence of things that are not found anywhere else, that point to someone receiving revelations about things that were not known at that time and it's been proven over and over and over again and what's really truly amazing to me is that there are many scientists who when they learn about the Quran read through it and find the scientific facts that have only been recently discovered inside the Quran they become reverse they become Muslims so for me, it's not, it's not like I'm stupid, but it's like I've been real, I've, I've had an awakening. I've opened up my eyes to something that is actually true, something that I can really firmly believe in, something that I can measure through with, through my, the rest of my life. And there's a lot of great peace that comes through living properly as a Muslim. Now, what's really sad is that there are a number of things out there, extremists and people who aren't actually practicing the true form of Islam, that have really given Islam a bad name in the media. And the media is run by people who are not Muslims, who are trying to make Muslims look bad. But the truth of the matter is, for the most part, the people who I have known who are Muslims are actually very good, charitable, humble, generous, loving, wonderful human beings. They'll give you the shirt off their back. They will help you in every single possible way that they can. They're genuine, loving, and sincere of everybody that's around them. They really care about people. And I'll never forget, there was one night that we were in Manchester. Um, I was getting a ride back to my hotel, and the person who's giving me a ride back to the hotel didn't have their GPS working, and so they didn't really know where they were or how to get to where I was going. And so they pulled over, and on the side of the road was a Muslim man. And the driver asked, hey, do you know how to get to the place we were going? And he said, I don't, but I'll be right back. He went and got someone who could give us those directions. And I just marveled in amazement that, you know, if you were to ask most people for help, if they couldn't help you, they would just say, I'm sorry, I can't help you. But what he did was he went to find someone who could help us. I mean, that's the kind of exposure that I've had to Islam. It is is just that helpful nature of showing your your fellow brothers and sisters in the human race kindness and trying to help one another. You know, so all these rumors of people out there that are, you know, saying Muslims are terrorists or, or Muslims are dangerous or listening to various politicians saying um, let's ban Islam or people who are Muslims from entering our country to me they truly don't have any idea what true Islam is and so if you are watching this video and you don't know much about Islam then feel free to contact me I'd be more than happy to talk with you more about Islam do some Google searches, go to the Quran.com website, read it, listen to it, learn and understand it. Because the more that you really dig into the religion itself and study it truly and sincerely, I believe you will find also that it is true, that it lines up with reality. You don't have to depend upon a feeling in your heart or something like that that give you some kind of confirmation. The confirmation, the witnesses are all around us. There are facts that line up. They're there. And that's what I truly love about Islam. And I am so grateful to be one and to finally have found these truths. And I'm honored and, and uh, proud of being a Muslim. And, and I'm not ashamed to declare with one 
um, testimony in one word is that I know there is no other God but Allah and Muhammad peace be upon him is his last and final messenger thank you